Kendrick. See, the truth is that we're frequency, and we go through life tuning ourselves to different frequencies. And just like the radio, when you tune yourself to a certain frequency, you get what that frequency has to offer you. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. Welcome to the podcast that's offering you greater. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor, Brian Hippolyte. Mic check, mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two, one, two. Let's get it going. What we in here, ain't we? Yeah. The Greater Resistance Podcast. We back in the, for another powerful episode of Elevating Consciousness. I'm Brian Hippolyte, the Manifest Mentor. Six-time author of founder of Manifest University, Manifest Academy, homeschool dad, and you know, all things about moving my culture forward. We were all sent to this dimension with a divine purpose and power. The events and effects of life show us how to create problems for our purpose. And prisons for our power. The Greater Existence. My book, The 111 Keys to Walking in Your Infinity. I wrote that book to bring light, life, and connection to the God within you. I call it the God State. From that elevated state of your existence... We experience infinite possibilities, capabilities, and the ability to create the realities we desire. So I offer you these keys of wisdom to help you get out of your mind and into your soul, to help you identify your divine purpose and direction, and to help you create a life of alignment and harmony. That's what the book is all about. That's what the podcast is all about. And that's what the movement is all about. So big shout out to everyone that's a part of Manifest University, Manifest Academy. And of course, everyone that's a part of the Greater Existence Podcast. And that includes you listening to it right now. I'm going to read you a key from the book. Key number four says, Acknowledge you have come to this place, this moment. This intersection of time and space for a divine opportunity to reach a greater level of existence. Can you do that right now? Don't you do that right now? Acknowledge that you have come to this place, this moment, this intersection of time and space for a divine opportunity to reach a greater level. Of existence. Now, the awesome thing about this is you have the ability to do it every day and at every moment. Every moment that you come to, whether you can judge it to be good or bad, it can be a divine moment. A divine opportunity for you to reach a greater level of existence. Most of the time, we identify something that we don't like or that we don't prefer. Say it was bad and don't even give ourselves the opportunity to learn from it, to grow from it, to become greater from it. We leave ourselves in this place of victimhood where we're victimized from it. And there's no growth that happens in that place. And you're aware of the lack of growth in that place because if we start talking about it, you'll start reacting and feeling as if you're still right there at that place. Although that same event is not taking place right now. You've seen adults behave as children (laughs) when confronted with something that came from a childhood wound they had not grown past. 
We've seen so many signs of this. Right? But no matter what opportunities you are faced with, or no matter what moments you are faced with, you can turn it into an opportunity to reach a greater level of existence if you acknowledge that you've arrived at this place. You've arrived at this moment. You've arrived at this intersection of time and space for a divine opportunity. If you change what you see, you'll change what you'll see. If you change how you look at it, you'll change what you see. It's all about perspective. So let's take the divine perspective. You want to have a divine opportunity, approach it with divine energy. Coming from a divine place. My first book, Manifesting You 111 Keys to Unlocking Your Divinity, is a great place to start if what I'm saying is already going over your head. And with all love and respect, my friend, my family, like the James, great James Baldwin said, If I speak above your head, then I'm speaking where your head should be. So go ahead and grab that book, Manifesting You 111 Keys to Unlocking Your Divinity. There's no excuses because it's in 155 countries. It could get to you. It's available at BrianHippolite.com. We all have what I call a God state. And before you can access it, you must identify with the God within you. You have become used to identifying yourself by where you have been, what you've been through, where you come from, what you have experienced. No one ever told you to identify yourself by what's within you. If you do not acknowledge the greater that is within you, you will not be greater. If you do not acknowledge the greater that is available to you, you will avoid your own greatness. You know that, you parent, you as a parent know that, you know that. You encourage your child to know that there is a greater opportunity and a greater capacity of life that they haven't reached for maybe in their young minds don't believe that they have they let you know children have a way of doing something wrong and then getting upset about it and thinking that they're not going to be able to do it right and you let them know no you you still look at all the times you've done it right before you can't possibly believe that he can't go right for you again But they do. They do have those moments. And it's easy to identify that behavior when we see it in our children. For some reason, it's not identified the same way when it's you doing it. But let's let's bring truth and let's bring clarity to that. Let's create more intention in your reality. Let's bring more attention to your reality and then we can create the realities that you desire. For many, well, I need to do some soul and self-discovery. Others need to create a meaning in their life. Discover the meaning in their life. The, the, the greater resistance podcast and again for others is going to mean being true to themselves even when it seems difficult some are looking for ways to obtain a work life balance others are looking for the meaning of their life we're going to talk about all these things today on the greater existence podcast I had an amazing conversation with manifest university we was talking about all these things the other day by the way if you're not aware if you're not a part of my daily calls and my weekly classes you can go to do you mu.com do you mu.com d o y o u m u.com 
and sign up. To join the community is absolutely free. And our classes and live sessions start at just a dollar a day. So you can tap in with me and this amazing community. So last week, we was having this conversation about cre- how how we all went about creating more meaning in our lives and the different things that we went through and different things that we went to in order to be the expression of the meaning of our lives. So you're going to hear from my brother. The almighty Jelani Hippolyte. Queen Chantel, who was on the last episode. And a great king, Omar Rashawn. We're going to hear from them. And you're going to grow. Welcome to the, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. What's going on, bro? How we feeling today? I'm great, Key. How about you? Wonderful, beloved. Wonderful. The whole part with the uh, the kid with the galoshes and the um jumping in the pot of thing and the parent uh, pulling them back from it and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, that part resonated with me because I'm, I remember that was that was my experience, like growing up with with like with artwork and with with um the creative stuff I wanted to do. Right. It was always, it was always, oh, you can't do that because it ain't gonna make you money. You gonna be a starving artist. You gonna be this. Oh, I'll ask about this or that. And it, oh, don't worry about that. That's dumb. That's that's that ain't gonna work. That don't. So it's like seeing that video again. It, it it reminded me like you gotta you gotta cultivate that curiosity, not crush it. So it's just something a a mental note to take it, to take for when I have my own. And it's funny because that's that's how I've always felt. Like even since a since a little boy going through that experience. Like, I've always been the one to go against the grain and go against the status quo and all of that just because of that one experience from a child when people kept uh, pulling me back from what I was naturally curious about and stuff like that. And luckily for me, luckily for me, that um, curiosity still hasn't faded to this day. So that's 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 what I got just now from that. How do we create meaning in our lives? That's a good one. You hit heavy hitters. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's it's a day to day experience. We have to be so intentional about doing the things and being around the people, the places, the things that are good for our soul. It starts with that recipe and walking out the day to day existence because we don't seek those things; those things seek us, and when we. Start from the inner part of knowing ourselves well and being so in tune and so aligned. It's like those things, like you just said, from learning from nature, learning from your kids, learning from your environment. That meaning comes to you because there was a purpose that was that was for us way before <laughs> we start to create these other narratives of what we think, what we believe, and there's a purpose behind all of it. So I think it's the inner work and doing that every day walking that out and, ex- and truly experiencing it for what it is except that a lot of times we can, we can walk something out and observe but not experience or avoid versus taking in because we don't want to feel a certain emotion or we don't want to have a certain experience but we have to walk it out and that whole idea of like a, a life well lived is, is, is in truth and it's in alignment and we have a responsibility to ourselves to have that inner knowing be so strong that no matter what it is that appears for us that has meaning, that we pay attention and and, and be attuned to that. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. For some, the question might be, what does a life well lived look like to you? Well, for me, a life well lived is waking up every single day in that alignment because now that we can get tapped and tuned into that and we know that the world and God and the universe responds to us, it's it's never moving from that or shifting from that ever again. Because that experience, whether it's it serves to open our eyes, to do something in particular, just to receive. <laughs> and we forget about that part too. That's where the joy comes from. That's where the 
the innate knowing that every single day there's something for us to observe or to have to move back to that childlike faith of experiencing something that we don't know but knowing that it's being gifted to us right. and that life is being gifted to us every single day that's a life well lived never shifting away from that I know a lot of times we will praise God and the universe for the things that happen in our minds that have meaning but a lot of times even that faith walk of experiencing in the unknown there's a big gift and there's a huge blessing in that too because it calls for you to be vulnerable it calls for you to really tune into what is, what is it that I need what is it that so I'm so in tune of it that I don't know what gift I have to give back to the world it's that seeking of that and that joy that you find in doing that every single day that right. um so many other things. Welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast with me, the Manifest Mentor. What would you say has changed about your household since your wife joined Manifest University? It's a lot more good energy, a lot more light, different conversations, less arguments, more communication, more openness. I love that. Thank you. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. I was on another interview call and the group asked for a small business, nonprofit um, breakdown in terms of how to outline your business, how to start it, and then how to write a grant and walking through a business plan. So I shared a little bit on that call, I think it was about two weeks ago, that I usually do a deep dive in terms of discovery of do you truly want a small business, a nonprofit, or an entity? Um, and then I'm going to shift over into how to create your business plan because that same tool is really what you would use for a grant initiative, whether it's for a business or for a grant. But there's the creative writing behind it that a lot of individuals get stuck behind. And I want to be able to illustrate the, the mindset, the process, so that it doesn't become overwhelming, but that people can get clarity in terms of, is this really what I want? Consciously, what am I going to use this business or this organization to do if that's what I want to? And what purpose is it going to serve? And then how do I illustrate that in a tactful way, in an impactful way, so that I can not only go after you know, money for my business as a small business, but then I can actually go after grants as well for my nonprofit. I welcome everyone, whether you are sure, whether you aren't, it's, it's good information. Um, daytime, I serve the federal government and working with a small, small minority business. So I want to be able to share as many tools, but to do that walkthrough in terms of having clarity, in terms of the responsibility behind it, the purpose behind it, so that there's clear clarity about whether I really want it, whether it's a, I just have a hobby or I want to be able to serve the community. And once you have that clarity, it, you can walk that out and knowing, because you know, I always talk about moving with it, the end in mind. So the end in mind is to be able to have these things, knowing the responsibility behind it. Because when we're clear about those things, even from the management of how we manage ourselves, how we are possibly we might be managing others if we want to have a business, there's, there's an alignment that has to happen there. There's clarity that has to happen there. And then it becomes so much easier to write out the business piece of it. Because that really and truly is the last piece so that you know the pieces that you have to walk out. For many people in MU, this question has been uh, about a meaning of life um, and, and knowing the meaning of their life, um, finding and, find, and finding purpose in their life. Um, and, uh, and I've always encouraged, the, you know, obviously the, cre the creativity, um, curiosity is such a, uh, a pivotal thing. And I like how, how he said it, and I'm probably not going to say it the same way, but but like that a scientist was just a child that never lost their creativity. Um, and we, even at, at, at whatever stage of life, 
can just go back to what we're curious about. What do we love to do? What passion is in us? And what can we do with that to help other people? To have, you know, to, to have an impact. And, um, and, and that puts your passion for the purpose. And that's all I've been hollering for the last two years. Also removes the pressure. Because then you'll really know. It's just something that I haven't done in so long. And I, I just need that. And it, it's that. It becomes hobbies. It becomes a way of living. A, a way of giving and serving yourself and others. Without the pressure of having an entity or a business or a nonprofit set up to it. Just because your soul needs it. And then you figure it out after that. There are those that have been doing it for a while. And you're like, no. <laughs> I really want to do something more. And it could be just serving your community. It could be a nonprofit. It could be a business. But... I love walking out the steps of having the clarity, tapping into your consciousness, and then moving into those paces because then you're doing it from a much better management of our souls and then the responsibility of how that rolls on and impacts other people. Yeah. Absolutely. And 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 whether if even if it's to just have an impact on your family. You know, the, 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 the first way to make a lasting impact on others is by helping them achieve their goals. So whether it's a single individual, a select few people, or a large group, the best way to make that lasting impact that you want to have is to help them achieve their goals. And this is what, you know, you can just decide who's going to be the benefactors today, who's going to, you know, um, but be open to helping and impacting others and you know in that way our use of time energy and expertise often does not like go unnoticed so when we help from our heart since that's where our passion resides it creates such beautiful things and you know like look at how you want to help others achieve their goals the, 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 the greater resistance podcast Absolutely. And it comes from a place of joy. So it's genuine. It won't shift. Because despite anything that happens along this journey, if it comes from a place of joy, it's going to serve someone in some capacity. And then you, you won't even, it comes effortlessly. Because it comes through conversations. It comes through showing love. It just comes through you showing up. Yeah. Showing up. That's a big thing. Can you... Tell me, um, what have you done to encourage creativity, or I'm sorry, curiosity, and um, with your children and in your household? Because that's definitely been a pivotal thing in having the desired result, results that you have. So, as simple as it sounds, it's just us walking out day to day. Now that we've had more time, it, whether it's been just going out to different events, whether it's just talking, sometimes it's just cooking together, sometimes it's doing nothingness. It could be us just all chilling and watching a movie, or it's it's asking that question: Do you take care of yourself today? Like, what did you do for yourself today? Because I realized the more innately that they all learn to respond to their own needs and wants and we're consciously well, talking about it and it's natural conversations that peaks anything that I could have charged in my mind because innately they're just tuning into because they're also very similar but also very different and I, I know that my responsibility isn't necessarily the outcome of their goals because the target might move but if I always try to put them on the right trajectory in terms of self-discovery and soul discovery, they'll find that for themselves and want to talk about it or share about it or inquire about it or discover. And it's that act. That's where the magic happens. Because even with them having their own business now, I think I've shared with everybody in the MU, like we went through different things, including myself, until they tapped into something that was like for this season, a yes. And, and that's what's been pivotal for them. But it's really been having just the existing and having the environment where they know we can talk about anything. We don't have to agree. We just have to align. And the biggest piece of all of this is 
being true to ourselves. So if there's things that you do want to discover, things that you have questions about, having that open dialogue, even when it may seem difficult, just because you're curious or just because you want to have dialogue, because the world will tell you a whole bunch of different things. Social media will tell you a whole bunch of different things. But what do you innately, just what is on your head and your heart? And that's having that natural, organic conversation has been so impactful. And I'm thankful for it too, because I can learn from them. And that helps to harness me and position me for whatever I need to do to serve them, to help them along the way. You said, you told me once that you, um, just taking around and taking them around and putting everything in their hand and letting them just try everything. Do you like this? Do you like that? No? All right, cool. Let's put that down. You like this? You want to try that? All right, let's go. Let's go get some of that and you know, try that out. And um, just that exposure and just allowing them to play in these different things and found and, until, you know, you found the one that they want one or the two, the two maybe that they wanted to, you know, stick with always giving them something to be curious about. I think that's so such a, a pivotal thing to do as a parent uh, to encourage that curiosity, giving them something to want to learn more about, want to do better, um, and that they feel pleased uh, when they create it and have something to, to share. Yeah, and so I just love the way that, that you walked it out with, the, with your children. Mm -hmm. And we still do because, you know, things are going to change. And my desire behind that is that they're so in tune to what they like or dislike, what they will or they will not, so that when they go out in the world and anyone else tells them about anything else, they'll know whether it, it resonates with them or not. Because that choice within itself is huge. We have, you know, as, <laughs> as adults, we walk around and... and I know at least from my generation and, and a lot of the individuals that I've grown up with and being from a West Indian background, we were told a lot of things of what shouldn't, what shouldn't, what will, what wouldn't. So I wanted that opportunity for them so that they had that clarity early on and the ability to enjoy it early on and for their friends to be able to enjoy that early on. Because it's not just them, it's, it's their circles too. Now it's them and a few of their friends and that that overflow has touched them as well. A lot of times we get overwhelmed by the idea of, or the, the traditional idea of a business plan or their grant rollout. And it, it's really, the, <laughs> until I started serving the minority business that I, that I work with now, where I've been with them for over maybe 12 or 13 years, there's so many missed opportunities just off of technicalities or just from getting wrapped up so much in writing a, a, a story instead of the narrative of truly and understanding who you are, what you're serving, what are your outcomes, a whole lot of good stuff. So if anything, I'm just hoping that it brings a lot of clarity and taps in and, and taps everyone on the shoulder who creatively wants to pursue it so that now it's not the writing piece that you have to overcome. It's really a question of, am I managing myself well enough that I can manage something that has this responsibility? And if so, all right, let's go. And these are, this is how you do it. These are the tools. And this is how you try in this season. Because a lot of it is trial and error until you get that, that routine. For those who are struggling with communicating with their mate, communicating to their mate, um, or about not communicating, uh, balancing um, with their relationship and their work life. How do you do it? You don't, well, I, you don't let me, let me take you, <laughs> you don't balance, you harm. So for that, so that's the first thing. <laughs> And, and and they're they want to have a better flow. They're looking for having a better flow, um, in that work life relationship. They call it balance, but it should be a harmony versus a versus a balance. But how do you do it? So I've taken the whole work-life idea off of the table for myself. Every individual has a life and there has to be harmony in all the pieces that come within it, especially within yourself. So now, whether it is 
work, relationship, kids, those are all a recipe, a part of Chantal's life. And Chantal has a responsibility to make sure that I, one, show up as my best self. So I try to make sure that I'm innately and in, in, intentionally doing the things that serve me positively so that when I do show up as a partner, when I do show up as a parent, when I do show up at work, that those things get the attention that it needs. My relationship and my marriage and my family come first despite anything else. So it took me a little bit of time to create that recipe of what would me working and having that harmony look like. What kind of role do I need to have? Do I need to step back? Do I need to but what type of thing do I want to do? Because at the end of the day, I've had more overflow from being in alignment with my family than I had with just being or, or focusing on work or focusing on a business. I became a whole lot clearer in terms of what my business needed to look like, which requires me to do less now. So in terms of what I started off with doing and doing a whole lot of things and looking for a whole lot of clients and doing all this work because of, I focused on the work versus the purpose. It was a realignment and a shift from myself. And I think that example, it becomes like a reciprocity thing because like your partner and even in any relationship that you're in, but even with family, it's like it, it changes how you show up. It changes your mindset. And for those that are in alignment with you, it challenges them to do the same thing. So it doesn't become a I want and I need versus this is what you should do and this is what I need. There's a harm being behind it because even what we look at in terms of quality time, when we look at how we communicate, when it's an alignment, like you're not really looking and trying to measure it. It just, you know whether it's in tune or not, if that makes sense. And that's even how I operate with all of my, with all of my children because they may need something differently at different times. But I pick up better on that, and it feels like we're dancing. Even if we're stepping on each other's toes sometimes, it feels like a dance when I'm aligned with my, doing everything that I need to do for myself first. So I don't try to balance anything. The harmony comes from me knowing that my life well lived has the responsibility to my marriage and to my family, and to my legacy first. And then balancing the time if we want to use that word in terms of how I serve and how I show up and everywhere else and keep working at it in that order until there's a really good harmony but I don't ever want to be back in a position where I'm working 60, 70, 80 hours and focusing on work trying to balance stuff and I'm not in alignment or having the experience or being able to walk out and having a quality life and all the other <laughs> That makes so much sense. It starts with being full-fledged beings ourselves and then giving everything in, a, in, in its proper order and alignment. There's no overflow there, then you're giving on a, on a finite number. I don't operate from there anymore. Wisdom. Yeah, that's conscious living. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Having you is full of some amazing individuals. I'm so grateful for um, for for this queen. Um, for for all our ME professors, man, I don't I know if you're aware of it, but we have some really amazing um, full-fledged beings in here walking out their power in amazing ways. And you know what I can also appreciate is the community of it, because whether we've been in MU for a minute or new to it, being able to be on some of on some of these calls, for this, whether it's the parenting purpose or if you come back here, it's the full circle of even us sharing something that may have been new to us two years ago. That's just become a part of our everyday living now, and helping somebody else, and that in turn, somebody else doing something else from that, and it coming back. There's always been this full healthy cycle of just being able to have the conversations and walking it out with each other and. That's a blessing, too. The, the, the Greater Resistance Podcast. Love this place. Brother Omar, how you doing, King? Good, bro. Good. What you been up to? How's the, the art world been? Man, it's been, you know, getting ready for a gallery show. So I've just been having my head down, just kind of just grinding every day. And then... Um, what is this show going to be about? Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a show that I'm curating. Uh, first, it was... Uh, 
What does that, what does that mean for, for those of us who don't know what you're right. So curating is like, you know, uh, where you basically kind of lay out the show and kind of, you know, you put the whole show together, um, like an administrator in a sense. Um, and you guys like just kind of curate the show, the feel, the tone, and, and, and select the artists. And so, in this particular show, I, it was only supposed to be um, me and two other artists, but my mentor I gave me an extra space that I kind of really just forgot about because I didn't realize he had okay me. So now the show's going to be a little bit bigger than last year. So I'm excited about that. It's just a little bit more work that has to be put in play in order to pull it off. But all is well. The universe definitely got me. So this is someone else's art and you're putting together the show, the layout, like the layout of the show and the, and, and the show being like where the art is placed as you walk through the gallery? So it, it'll be me and uh, two other artists, but I think I'm gonna uh, invite some other artists uh, just because we got an ample amount of space that we need to fill. Okay. Uh, the name of the show is gonna be called Universal Drip. Uh, and I, you know, a little bit of that is just kind of self-explanatory, but, you know, to just add a little context to it, it Universal Drip is just, you know, uh, a variety of creatives. You, know, you can look at it like a, a selective uh, artists who are just universally unique uh, in style, flavor, and, uh, and what they do. And uh, that, that kind of adds to the drip part, you know what I mean? I think that's just the lingo that, you know, my, my uh, the kids that I work with, they use it a lot, and I just thought it was a good uh, title for this show. Universal drip. And so, when is the sh- when is the show start? Uh, August 9th to December 11th. I mean, to September 11th. I got a question for you, bro. It's a self healing question. I want to get some advice from you, um, or just some wisdom from you on. Uh, steps you've taken towards self-healing? Uh, really just being okay with because I one thing I've noticed about life, life does give off a pattern or it gives us this, this these forms of evidence that allow us to see things and review it in a way that you can see the patterns in, in, in certain aspects of you know Things that, like, it's based, you know, that's what drew me to the book, but things that don't serve you well, like that you spoke in Manifest, uh, Manifesting You, uh, uh, 111 Keys, to unlock your divinity, you spoke on, like, you know, if it doesn't, uh, basically, if it doesn't elevate, you gotta let it go. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. And that's just something that I've always kind of just understood, and, and just always find peace, because you can't force nothing. It, it, it needs to have an organic flow to it. And, yeah. And then when you're part of, you know, and then I would say uh, there's levels of accountability, too, in the, in the in the healing process. So, you know, I've always been a person to hold myself accountable, even if when, when I didn't like um, what I was up against. And, and I might have been having some, some type of form of resistance. Um, I hold myself accountable. And, um, I think that has helped the the journey in healing as well. And then you know when you when you hold yourself accountable, be okay with letting it go. You know, just be okay with like, hey, you know, um, yeah. It's, it's it's a combination of those things that I just spoke of, and just really positive reinforcement too. And not really looking back, just being okay with ripping off the rearview mirror and just looking forward. <laughs> Ripping off the rearview mirror, that's a great visualization of, of that action, of taking away the option, you know, mm-hmm. take, you know, taking away the reference point, taking away the easy way to do it, you know? And I always alluded that to, if you're constantly looking in the rearview, that's a form of paranoia, you know what I mean? Because I know when we's in the streets and we, we you know, yeah, when we constantly looking at the real view, it's like, man, what we so is they chasing us? Is somebody, you know, it's like that's a distraction. 
and 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 sometimes that's why I say you got to rip off the rear view and look forward um, to alleviate, you know, that thing that creates paranoia or self doubt in, in in that space, and just constantly look forward and be happy about what's in front of you, and that allows you to be present at the same time as well. And, and rather than putting off the vibration of fear. Lack, lack, lack of safety, lack of trust of what's of, of, you know, of yourself or your situation. Because you absolutely right. agree with that. Like, because not only is that does that action happen like that, but there's a certain there's a vibration, there's a, a certain vibration that that come off with that when you are looking around and looking behind you and just not being, trusting what's in front of you. Not yeah, not trusting, not and not trusting the environment. You know, what I mean, being always being on your ten. So. There's a certain vibration that aligns with that. That shit is not the one that, that we're trying to be on. Mindset, determination, acceptance, forgiveness. Release. And I'm a very optimistic person. I think that helps a lot too. Like I'm not a pessimist, pessimistic individual. Okay. Um, I, I never noticed that about my personality at any point in my life. I've always been a person that believed, even when people couldn't believe it. They was like, "Oh man, that's absurd. Uh, that's a little extreme." Nah. I've watched too many miracles happen in my life, I know. And uh, that's been a superpower for me. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. That is a superpower. That's an extreme superpower, man. I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for I'm grateful that you had that. Appreciate you. For real, because there's, um, that shit's powerful, and it'll carry, it'll carry you a long way and make you create something that nobody else seen, no one else was going to see, but you was sent to create that shit I know that I know what it's like and I, and I know that feeling and I know how important it is to get to the other side of it man so I look forward to seeing more art from you man welcome to the frequency that's all about turning you into a greater version of you you are now tuned in to the greater resistance podcast with me the manifest mentor um, if I could use uh, one word to describe my experience, it would be growth. Um, from the live speakers to the games to the exercises, it was just continual growth, information, and expansion. Um, I feel like you can't leave like you came. Like you had to have taken something from that. Um, another word I would use to describe is love. Like when I walk through the door, I walked to the people I never met in my life, most of them. And I was met with hugs, hey sis, hey man. And it was all love, like a family reunion. So that's how it described my experience. It's not just a university. We are a tribe and a family. Join Manifest University today to be in my daily calls, my weekly classes, and a part of our 24-7 community. You can go to brianhippolite.com or doumu.com to join Manifest University today. You are now tuned in to the Greater Resistance Podcast. Man, what's your 11-11 goal? You got one yet? Um, the, the MU Recipe Book. The MU Recipe Book, okay. I like that. I like that. I like that. It seems like we got we got a we got a nice little formula when it comes to laying some books out, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this thing this thing kinda clicking like a little something, man. We might have to have a MU publishing house. I think it would be smart. We launch we launch our own authors, you know what I mean? Give them the platform, you know. Help them co create that space that they needed, that they've been dying to be in, or yeah. been trying to be in. Because a lot of times I, I realize just the resource, people think they lack resource, but really it's, it's right here in your ecosystem. That's right here, it's right here in your ecosystem. You got editors, you got other writers that can make contributions, you got designers, you got web developers. I mean, you got everything you need in order to be successful and get that, that, that nice run. I mean, we got examples in the group already. I like it. The ecosystem is growing on a, on a daily basis. So, Omar, one more question for you, man. What do you do to have a great day? 
to be in your power, to have a, to, you know, to move the way it's supposed to move. Um, although life be, you know, life in. Yeah, yeah, because life do be life. I, I, you know, I have these moments, and I, and I, I think the reason why my moments be like real subtle and don't, they don't last that long, because I, I figure out how to be my biggest coach, my biggest fan. Um, that's something that I always encourage people to do is just, you know, be your biggest fan, speak life into yourself. Even when you, you're struggling that day, you know what that day, if, if you feel it, hey, shake it out. Talk that shit to yourself. You know, and I, I think that's the key. I've always been a shit talker to myself. The, 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 the Greater Resistance Podcast. And I think that it's not in a bad way. Like, I'm not doubting myself. I'm, I'm telling myself, this is what you can do, and this is what you have done. And you just, you one step moving forward. You know, I, I, I break it down so simple in my mind that I don't have time to be in that space anymore. And I think, you know, I set the tone. I think... Being, being a father who, you know, have to nurture my, my garden each morning, which I'm speaking towards my daughters. I think starting off loving them in the morning sets a great tone. And, and really getting up before they do, it's getting my mindset prepped. Rather, I'm listening to some, you know, some uh, some stuff from Manifest University, rather, you know, some, some music that I really enjoy that's not taking my vibrations in other places, but really just about self-awareness. And then, because sometimes I wake up and get the social media stuff that I need to get done for my clients, and then I jump on the MU, and then while I'm in the MU, you dropping the kids off, and I'm headed to uh, the not-for-profit that I do work for. And so... And I think what you put in your body is very important because it's been times where you probably didn't eat the healthiest that day, right? But I woke, wake up a little bit more mm. fog, fog-minded or not feeling as light and, and divine. And so I learned that, you know, if I want to wake up in a good space, I think it's about, you know, not eating late, eating early, allowing my body to rest, almost get, giving myself a chance to fast and wake up light and then drink a bottle of water. I think all of that plays a role in that, that harmony that I'm describing um, to get the day started. Since you are what you eat, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. That does play a, good, a big part in it. Appreciate, appreciate that wisdom, bro. Uh, we got, I told y'all, we got so many things of people in here. And so is this book the uh the one for the one for November the cookbook? Is that gonna be your first book? Yeah, I'm I'm right now working on the green line. My brother convinced me that remember I was gonna do the the the, the kind of like an art book, tabletop book that kind of give you a little bit of about my life and my experience as a creative. He told me the green line is all of that. He's like, you don't need to yeah. have two books. He said, go ahead and put that all in one. It have enough value and substance to where, you know, it it make an impact versus you trying to do two books, you know, blah, blah, blah. So it, it, he talked to me. It, it was kind of like I didn't have that thought process because I thought, you know, it'd give me the edge of having multiple products. But then I, there's, there's two things I got to market over time. And so uh, it just so made perfect. Another a book can be written just on you. You know, later people care more about your uh, the background story once there's that first thing that they care about. Putting pieces of you in that in that book. It's just like spoon feeding them. They're going to want to know more of that, you know, more of that story. Right. Because it's going to be a collaboration uh, recipe book from members of MU. Um, and this will be a way for anybody who hasn't published in the book. This is an opportunity to do so and take advantage of that. And um, 
I've been publishing other books, but this is something that I'm kind of like, this is like a curation. If you look at what we was using the word curate, uh, the art show, this is basically what I'm doing with this book. Along the side, along the side with Sierra, because um, uh, I definitely want Sis to be a part of this uh, experience. And so, yeah, that, to answer your question, uh, I haven't did my first complete book with just really me speaking from um, kind of like the 111 Keys, but I've been a part of, like I got a black jury that I'm a part of where it's multiple authors. Um, it's similar to what's going to happen with the recipe book as well. But yeah, uh, hopefully that answered your question. Word. So when is the Green Lion book? When you when you when you plan on dropping that one? Uh, I'm looking at coming in breaking out in 2023 with it. Okay. You know, um, I'm creating a body of work right now as an artist, and so that it give me time to pick what I want. And then you know I've been journaling, so a lot of the the stuff that it, that spontaneous thoughts and things like that, uh, I'll be implementing that inside the book and so they give me enough time and new experiences to be present in that might add some value to it as well so for me it's important to take my family with me so it's going to be definitely some contribution pieces that you rather it's stuff that we done said in the interview um, are things that I read from you know our experience you know I'm going to drop that energy in there that way we just keep keeping each other's name alive. I think that's important too. Like when you have that opportunity to do so, you know, you, sh you, you shall do it, you know, and it just makes sense, you know. Um, that's part of that, planting that seed and continue to grow crops in a, in a way, in my mind, that's how I kind of see it. The, 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 the Greater Absolutely. Resistance Podcast. Absolutely, that's the way, that's the way it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Shit, you know, if you ask me, that's how Atlanta was built. <laughs> In a way, from a music standpoint, Atlanta was built on that type of mindset. You know what I'm saying? They demonstrated. The rest of the world didn't know that this was happening, but Atlanta was definitely a place that people could say, man, hey, you could dare to get a track with anybody that's dead there, that dude. You know what I mean? If you in the right studio, right time. And a lot of times it wasn't even about no money. It was on like, nah, this is this is the move. That's a real, that, that is a real, man. That's still a, a part of that culture. Yeah. That's been, it's been embedded in their in in they culture. I'll do this with you because this will help Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because well, I never seen that until I went to Atlanta. And, I, and I, I, that was my mindset coming into MU, period. You know what I'm saying? Like, we got to, it's, it's like, hey, you need my help? Boom. How, how can I make a contribution? How can, you know, and create that energy. Because once everybody goes to the ecosystem, they know they'll never be thirsty. It's always going to be running water. Right. Right. That's what it's about, man. And because you family, you get opportunities that other people wouldn't get. That I would, I know for me, I didn't, I, I know what I do for MU, I don't do for the outside of the world. You know what I mean? What we do here is special. It is extremely. And so for me, that that's, you know, hopefully people continue to come back see that as a a light force to want to be a part of and 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 really reciprocate that same mindset we'll look up in a couple more years it's, it's, I, I already know like your vision your vision was always to you know help her I think what you say a hundred millionaires or something it was it was something it was some number there it created a hundred millionaires yeah 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 yeah, I definitely see that happen. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it too. I can see it clearly. I 
I can see beyond that vision. I know what we're going to do with that economic power, with that collective power. And every day I'm moving closer to my goals and doing the things that are in alignment with my goals. And that's really what the whole movement is about. Greater shall you be, greater shall you do, greater shall you have. It's not just something that I say, it's something that I live by. It's something I tell myself multiple times a day. It's a, it's, it's a philosophy that governs my life. And I'm here to elevate consciousness. This has been conversations of elevated consciousness. Thank you for everyone that's been listening to the Greater Resistance Podcast. Thank you for everyone that's been going to BrianHippolite.com and purchasing my books, Manifesting You, 111 Keys to Unlocking Your Divinity. Teach Them Young, 111 Keys to Building Phenomenal Beings. The Greater Existence, 111 Keys to Walking in Your Infinity. And my latest book, the first children book, written by myself and my uh, then six-year-old daughter, Samara Hippolyte. It's called Samara Loves Her Locks. Again, it's available at BrianHippolyte.com, and it is an amazing children's book that talks about loving yourself, your originality, and your authentic nature. And it's a it's a great children's story. It's for the young one in your life. If you want to be in my daily calls and my weekly classes, you could go to do you mu.com and sign up. Classes start at just a dollar a day. We got day classes, we got evening classes, everything that is personal development, self mastery, goal execution, successful living, all that. Myself and the mighty Manifest University professors, as well as our community, is available at doumu.com. The community is absolutely free. You can join and be a part of the MU campus, the Manifest University campus. And like I said, the classes start at just a dollar a day. There is a limited amount of one-on-one mentorship opportunities with me per month. Those are available as well at BrianHippolite.com and as well at Manifest University. Listen, I love y'all to life and I wouldn't water you if I didn't want you to grow. A rising tide raises all boats, so take this elevation. Take this enlightenment and spread it. Do more than just subscribe. Make sure that you like. Make sure that you subscribe to the podcast. Make sure that you share it. But more than just sharing this podcast, share the elevation on your own in your own conversations. Put this uh, put this into action. I could tell you about bondage and I could tell you about freedom. And I can tell you that applied knowledge is the biggest difference between them. All right? So till next time, you know these podcast episodes are dropping every Sunday morning, 9 a.m. like a church service. So if you don't connect with me till then, do be aware that you can't pull up on me wherever you get your music at. I got some music over there. I got some affirmations over there. Got a couple lessons and classes, audio classes over there. So the elevation is available. But it's nothing like what's going down at Manifest University. So I'll see you at doumu.com. I'll see you back here at the Greater Resistance Podcast. Be great, be powerful, be God's. Peace and prosperity to you and yours. It's Brian Hippolyte and Manifest Mentor. And all this talk about creating meaning in our life and giving from our overflow has really made me want to hear the root chakra affirmation I created called Overflow. And of course, it's streaming everywhere that music is at. But you heard it right here on the Greater Resistance Podcast. This is Overflow. Yeah. 
I rule chakras balance. I'm rooted and grounded, divinely protected, divinely guided. I am more than enough. I let all worries go. I give from what I have. This is my overflow. 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 This is my overflow. 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 I have more than enough. This is my overflow. I am safe. I am protected. I'm intentional. I'm effective. I am beautiful. I am wholeness. I am strength. I am boldness. I am grace. I am mercy. I am worthy. I am worthy. I am rooted. I am balanced. Releasing anger, spite, and malice. Free of grudges. Free of judgment. Greater than before, and greater is coming. I think abundance and I speak abundance. I am abundant and I see abundance. Safe and sound, nothing's harming me. All is well, all's in harmony. Mind, body, and soul, all in alignment. There's an answer to each problem, and I find it. My root chakra is balanced. I'm rooted and grounded, divinely protected, divinely guided. I am more than enough. I let all worries go. I give from what I have. This is my overflow. 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 This is my overflow. 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 I have more than enough. This is my overflow. I am grateful for the wealth of peace, love, and joy I found within myself. I am secure. I am stable. I am supported. I am thankful. I gravitate to what encourages me. I uproot what discourages me. I release what no longer serves me and align what reminds me that I'm worthy. I accept all of me. There's even beauty in my flaws. There's art in my scars. And I'm in love with them all. I'm rooted in the gift of this moment. As the universe affirms, I am chosen. I build a life on the foundation of faith, peace, love, trust. I am whole, I am complete, exactly as I am, I am more than enough, I am a work of art, and a work in progress, I'm not where I used to be, and I respect my progress, I am one with my true self, and this is true wealth, my root chakra is balanced, I'm rooted and grounded, Divinely protected, divinely guided. I am more than enough. I let all worries go. I give from what I have. This is my overflow. 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 This is my overflow. 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 I have more than enough. This is my overflow. As the sun rises, so does my energy. I'm empowered to empower with my energy. I tune out distractions. Tune into my divinity. Energize and vitalize. I am alive, aligned, and synergy. Freely give to the universe. Freely the universe gives to me. My thoughts support my growth and elevation. I respond to opportunities without hesitation. I move towards my goals and destinations in control of my life's direction and vibration. I will not create stories or meanings. Every cell in my body supports my well-being. I inhale trust, exhale fear. I'm where I'm meant to be. It's something for me right here. Equipped with everything I need to thrive. 
world could fill with chaos, there's peace still inside. I feel deeply loved by the universe, rooted in blessings, can uproot any curse. As I inhale and I take a breath, all is well, I'm forever blessed. As I exhale and release the stress, all is well, I'm forever blessed. My root chakra is balanced. I'm rooted and grounded, divinely protected, divinely guided. I am more than enough. I let all worries go. I give from what I have. This is my overflow. 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 This is my overflow. 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 I have more than enough. This is my overflow. 